name is Faith Griesbeck. I'm a birth and postpartum doula and childbirth educator living and working in downtown Muskegon, Michigan. I serve the West Michigan Lakeshore. I recently visited Hackley Community Care, a federally qualified health center or FQHC in Muskegon Heights. Hackley Community Care is one of two FQHCs in Muskegon Heights with midwifery practices. FQHCs receive funding to serve the underserved and the poor, but they serve the entire community. Many women seek out midwifery care. The word midwife means with woman, so midwives work collaboratively with a woman, her family, and nature, while doctors are more trained to look for pathology and treat that. There are many types of midwives. Most of them serve low-risk women. I'll work with any trained midwife, regardless of her certifications. I think families make really good decisions about who they feel safest with when they give birth, and I trust them. So these are the types of midwives. There are certified nurse midwives, or CNMs. There are two types of direct entry midwives. Certified midwives, CMs, and certified professional midwives, CPMs. These, these uh, midwives attend college and receive a midwifery degree without becoming a nurse first. These usually apprentice, do some study, and take a test. There are also independent midwives, also known as lay or granny midwives. They have various training. I have never met a midwife that didn't have many things to teach me, so I, I love and appreciate them all. But in the state of Michigan, you have to be a certified nurse midwife to practice in a federally qualified health center. In other states, both direct entry midwives can practice. I provide a lot of statistics in this video. A lot of practices don't even keep statistics. So Hackley Community Care not only collects the data, they use it to try to improve their services. I challenge people who are watching this who are pregnant to ask these same questions of their providers. It's up to us to hold our providers to a high standard, and we deserve that. Midwives at federally qualified health centers impact the lives of women across the United States. I personally delivered with midwives that I saw for care at a federally qualified health center, Ryan Nina Health Center, in Lois Sida, Manhattan. Working with them empowered me and changed my life, and that's something that I want to share. In future videos, I hope to interview the midwives at Hackley Community Care and other care providers across our area. Sarah, thanks for agreeing to do this interview with us. So. Well, thanks for asking. Yeah. Um, I just have a few questions. Okay. The first question is, why, tell me a little bit about your own personal experiences with childbirth and breastfeeding. I know you have a few kids. Yes, yes. I have four children. Okay. Um, well, I guess five. Um, <laughs> I, have, one, I right? have a lot. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and um, I have had um, midwives for most of my delivers or family physician. Okay. Um, and I have... Um, had all natural births, no epidurals myself or anything, um, although I know everyone has their own choice, but mm -hmm. I personally like the natural birth route and have breastfed all my kids for at least a year, so that's, that's my own personal. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Through our, in our community, through Trinity, is that they need a collaborating physician, so I'm their collaborating physician, um, but it really means we're all one big team. You know you're a family doctor? Yes. I love taking care of the baby. So family practice was the perfect place, or family medicine was the perfect mm -hmm. place to come for me. Well, to you get to see them come into the world and exactly. then you care for them throughout their lives. So. Exactly. Ninety percent of um, patients will present with back pain at some point in their life okay. to their primary care physician. So it's okay. a high number yeah. of patients, and then pregnant patients is even higher. Mm -hmm. You know, what we do is that they are referred to me. I have a special table in one of my rooms okay. where they will come in and we'll do some gentle techniques mm -hmm. um, that are appropriate in pregnancy. So if somebody comes in for a visit, an OB visit, 
uh, would over the course of their prenatal visits, would they see you and all of the midwives, or would they just see the same person every time? Do you have your own separate patients? How does sure. That work? What we try to do is provide continuity of care mm-hmm. for women because we know that they um, feel more comfortable when they have the one person that they identify with throughout their pregnancy. That's so actually, I don't have a panel of my own patients. Okay. They typically will see a midwife see throughout midwives. their care. Mm-hmm. The method that I teach is called the Billings ovulation method. Mm-hmm. So it's very effective for women trying to space their pregnancies. Um, it's great with breastfeeding because there's no hormones involved. Um, there's no devices or anything. It's just something a woman pays attention to. Um, we really believe that birth is a natural process and that um, uninterrupted, it does its own thing, its own way of progressing on its own. So we try to stay hands off as much as possible. Um, allowing women to really be empowered during their delivery experience or their birth experience, including their prenatal care. and um, So just allowing them the choices in, in, in their birth. So some women just would like a more natural birth, and some women really prefer that epidural, and, and we really let women have that choice. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of our basic core belief. Okay. Uh, is there anything that... Y- a moms can get from coming here in terms of mental health, breastfeeding support. Do you have sure. supportive services? Yes, absolutely. Um, right now we have um, Nancy Weller, who is mm-hmm. our behavioral health consultant here in the OB department. She's just focused on our OB patients. And then we have a program called Maternal Infant Health Program, um, and that really supports women throughout their pregnancy and for a year after birth. Mm-hmm. And then we have a support group, postpartum support group, that we run here that's open to the community, but it, it's held here at our office. Um, are all breastfeeding friendly. We love breastfeeding, all of that stuff. But we actually hired a PA who's a breastfeeding um, cons- lectation consultant, I guess it is, an okay. official lactation consultant. What's her name? Um, her name is Tasha... Fair? Yes, Tasha Fair. Is that right? I think that's right. Yes. So she's coming over and she's going to um, do pediatrics mostly Mm -hmm. with our pediatrician, Dr. Siflinga, Um, but she will be our lactation consultant that we can use on site. Um, So if we are seeing a postpartum mom or um, if she's seeing the baby, she can really, she's going to be seeing their baby and then she'll be able to help mom right there. Through a process called Centering Pregnancy, we're going to have group prenatal care mm-hmm. offered to women. Not everyone will have to do it, but we want to action. encourage women mm-hmm. to do that. And we will bring Tasha to that um, group okay. and help her introduce breastfeeding that way, not just us oh, introducing it. But that has been shown to increase breastfeeding rates nationally, nice. so we want to bring that to Hackley Community Care as well. So more support for breastfeeding prenatally. Yep, and then also postnatally at that one week phone call, one of our nurses is going to be calling, mm-hmm. actually our midwives are going to be calling the patients at one week postpartum. About 50% of our women are breastfeeding at delivery. Okay. Um, we, When they deliver, and this is um, pretty much it's standard at the hospital, but we really adhere to this, and we, we're one of the practices that brought the King Groove Care as well, okay. like helped enforce it, but um, it's basically skin to skin for mm-hmm. the first hour after delivery. So as soon as the baby's born, we put them right on mom's chest. Um, we typically do the delayed cord clamping where okay. they uh, allows the baby to get all of their blood and then let the baby really rest on mom's chest for that hour. We don't weigh the baby. We don't do any of the other stuff to the baby. About how, how often would you say you do episiotomies for moms who are having Yes. Yeah, um, when we look at the numbers, I can't find any episiotomies. Okay. I know standard practice is we definitely don't do them mm-hmm. here. So I'll use that warm, warm mm-hmm. water and and that as the baby's head is coming out, trying not to do too much manipulation yeah. of the perineum to right. get all the swelling, trying to mm-hmm. avoid a lot of that swelling. And then um, a Chinese doctor taught me a technique where um, we really support the perineum as the posterior shoulder comes out. Okay. So I've had a lot less tears after learning that technique. Nice. Um, really don't really even schedule inductions, post inductions until after 41 weeks. Okay. Um, and then if they prefer to wait longer, we can let them wait a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. In a low-risk setting, we can let them wait to 42 weeks. Our C-section rate um, is, let's see, we had um, 23% C-section rate of all of our deliveries, mm-hmm. but over half of those are just repeat C-sections. Right, because we vaccinated. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Do you know your epidural rate? Huh? Epidural was 34%. Okay. But we've used essential oils. Some mm-hmm. people have used essential oils. Some people bring a doula with them mm-hmm. to their birth. 
that allows them, helps them, maybe massaging during delivery, uh -huh. um, different techniques like that, or their support, their labor support person, nice. whoever that is. Mm -hmm. So lots of different options. Okay. Bathtub, we have a tub, nice. like a jacuzzi tub. Yeah. So, yeah.